The following is a paid program, and the views expressed on this show do not represent the views of WJZ AM, Intercom Communications, its sponsors, or affiliates. This is AHA Business Radio, creating AHA moments for business, by business, and about business, providing opportunities to discover information to help you run your business and guide your decision making. The more you know, the better decisions you make. AHA Business Radio is produced by Alan Hirsch Advisors. For more information, log on to ahabusinessradio.com. To join in tonight's conversation, call 410-481-1300. Now, here's your host for AHA Business Business Radio, Alan Hirsch. Good evening. Welcome to tonight's show. Uh, my guest in the studio with me tonight is Chris Coca. Uh, he has a company called Strategic Sales Solutions, LLC. Uh, welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you. I'm really happy to be on the show with you tonight, Alan. It's my pleasure to have you. First question I always ask is what motivates you to get up in the morning and go to work? That's a great question. Um, I'm really passionate about helping small and mid-sized business owners be successful. And I'm also passionate about uh, making a difference in my community. I really love the opportunity to work with different businesses across a lot of different industries. Um, I love being my own boss uh, and, and having the independence. And every day is a new opportunity uh, to, to get out there and make it happen. So how did you get... Uh, started? What's your, your your history to the point where you've become this uh, strategic sales solutions consultant working with uh, business owners? I've got over 20 years of sales leadership experience, mostly with bigger companies, Fortune 500 companies, as well as mid-sized companies. And uh, I've taken that sales leadership experience and brought it to, to this company, uh, really to be able to make a difference uh, at the local level with small and mid-sized businesses. And part of my background is I started actually as a tax accountant in Dallas, Texas, and, and then made it all the way to sales. Good thing you're not doing that. You'd be a lot of learning this year. There would be. <laughs> I would be totally confused by the new tax law. So, uh, I think uh, most of us are. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. And, and I, I had the opportunity really to work from the very uh, bottom of the p l in tax to the very top of the p l in sales. Uh, it was a really big mountain for me to climb. And a lot of people really doubted that, that I could make that move and do that. Uh, but I'm lucky. I've got a great wife who has supported all my crazy moves uh, throughout my career. And I'm also lucky that I had a company that gave me the opportunity to prove myself. And that's really all anybody can ask for is that opportunity to show what you can do. And when I was given that opportunity to move into sales and to move into leadership, um, you know, I just took it and ran with it. That sounds great. Uh, uh, most companies should really think about the uh, promoting within, giving people within their own organizations opportunities to grow and prosper uh, through their own co- uh, your your company. If they're the right kind of employees, you know, give them the training, make them feel comfortable that they can move forward, and give them the the coaching and the education they need to take the next steps. Yeah, I've, I've worked with several companies that don't give their employees that opportunity. They pigeonhole you in a certain area and they say, you're good at this. And then they don't allow you to move. And guess what happens when a company does that? They lose their talented employees. Because, because they, they, go, they go someplace else. They want to do different stuff, right? They want to be challenged. They want to grow professionally. And I was lucky to work, uh, not the first company, but I was lucky to find a company that was able to do that. And I would suggest most of them don't necessarily move for the money, but move for the opportunity, the challenge, and the respect. Yeah, it's really about them finding what they're really good at and what they're passionate about. Uh, and I knew that sales was my passion. As exciting as tax accounting is and, and the life of an accountant can be, um, I really knew my passion was in sales. And when you do that, you're, you're giving your best work because you're really doing something that you're right well, and, and feels right to you. As, as I've said many times on this show, uh, two business uh, business entrepreneurs, and I say it privately to them, if you don't have a passion for what you're doing, you shouldn't be doing it. There's there that's absolutely right, Alan. Because you're you're going to have problems. You're going to have these mountains to climb and issues that you have to deal with. And if you don't have a passion for it, you're going to give up. And, and and a lot of people do so, that. Absolutely. So as a uh, strategic sales uh, consultant, one, what do you bring to the table? to your clients, what's the process you might be starting with when you come in 
And then I want to look at it later in the show. Uh, if someone needs a sales consultant, what kind of questions should they be asking to get the information? But let's first talk about how you come, come in, you've been brought in. How do you go about that process to get it started? Well, I think the, the most important first step is to do a lot of listening. You can't go in with any assumptions that a, a customer or a client needs, what you've done with other customers or clients before. Even if you think you know their business, you really need to explore and listen and delve into where their true problems and pain point uh, would be and why they brought you in. You really need to understand that. And I think once you do that, then what I can bring to the table is I can help them refine their sales strategy. Um, I can build a sales process for them and, and give them the right infrastructure so that if they put all those elements together, they can run their sales function successfully and grow. And my goal ultimately is to work my way out of a job. So uh, I'm trying to make sure that I leave them with the right sales engine, basically, to be able to run without me and to grow and thrive well after I'm gone. So uh, before before I can next question, just remind everybody out there, I'm Alan Hirsch. I'm with Chris Coca. Uh, give us a call if you have any questions, 410-481-1300. Uh, so in order to listen, you have to ask questions. Yes. What, kind, what are some of the questions you're going to be asking? I ask basic questions on... How did you get to the point where your sales have stalled? You know, you were growing for years and years. What what brought you to this point where you can't grow anymore? Um, what are the the kinds of competitive pressures that you face? And do you really know um, your competitors well? And do you really understand your targeted customer well? And then what's unique about your business? Because if you're in a business that competes with 10 or 100 other businesses, it's really important that you have a unique value proposition uh, to be able to distinguish yourself. So I've got to get to the heart of what makes that business unique. And then are they really communicating that unique proposition to their, to their customers? And in many cases, that's part of what's missing is they really are not able to communicate that. So... Once you've got some of this, what, is, what are some of the processes you go through uh, in working with the uh, either the head of sales or the C CEO, I would imagine, in a small, mid-sized business, predominantly the business owner? It, it's pretty basic. I, I start with an assessment of what they're currently doing today and make sure that we're on the same page with where they're actually at before we move forward. And then we sit down and we really put their process together. And so... You know, we're, I think we're stepping, we're, so what are some of the things, and that's really I'm trying to get to, you need to understand about their process. Sure. Before you can, I mean, when I do a strategic plan, for example, I, I ask questions, why do you exist? What are your core values? Uh, things like that. Yes. What is, what's, your, what's your market? Who are your customers? Uh, what's your demogra uh, your geographic area? You need to, those are the, to me, there's some of the base questions you need to know when you're talking about sales and marketing. Yeah, and I think we've talked about it before. What is your why? So I need to understand what is the customer's why? Why are they in business? You mean the company's why or the customer's why? The company's why. Uh, okay. So why are they in business? And, you know, what sets them apart? And what's their mission and what are their values? And, and that a lot of people don't even delve into that. But if you don't understand the company's mission and the company's values, then you're not going to be able to build the right strategy or the right process for them to, to succeed. And I'd add something to that. Uh, a dream or a vision. Where, where do you if you don't know where you want to go, you can have a mission of what you do. Sure. But if you don't have a vision of uh, somewhere out in the future of what it is you're trying to do, uh, and it only needs to be a short one or two page sentence, one or two line uh, or one or two sentences, then you have with that mission, you have goals to, to re how do we then uh, get to where we want to, that dream? And, and I think we is the key part of that sentence, that just because the owner has that vision and knows where he or she wants to go, that doesn't mean that the people on the sales team or the people working for that owner 
share that vision or even understand it. So a lot of you, you have to dive down to the employee level to really understand, is the whole team on board with that vision? Do they understand in a year or in three to five years where the company really wants to be? Or um, do they need to close that gap with their employees? Because if, if you have that gap with your employees and they don't understand, your customers are not going to understand either. Well, just before we go, the break reminds me uh, of the comment, if the employees don't love the business, why, would, why should the customers? Yes, and I've worked with uh, <laughs> companies where everybody loves the business, and I've worked with a few where it's a 50-50 <laughs> proposition on whether they love the business and, or not. And I think you're really right. Those that love the business, under one of the things the great leaders do is they have that vision, but they share it and make sure everyone knows what that vision is so that together they can, the we the team from the top to the bottom can move forward. Uh, uh, we do have to go to commercial break. Uh, and we come back, I'm going to continue this conversation with uh, Chris Coca, president of Strategic Sales Solutions, LLC. Later in the show, I have the AHA Trivia Biz- uh, the trivia Contest, when the winner will receive a gift certificate to Touche, Touche Bakery, Cafe in Elkridge, Maryland. I'm Alan Hirsch of Alan Hirsch Advisors, and this is AHA Business Radio on CBS Sports Radio, 1300 AM. I'm Alan Hirsch, and I believe in making a difference in the lives of others. I help you understand your vision, both professional and personal, discover why you're in business, work with your visions to align them with your why, give you feedback on what is important, and hold you accountable for your decisions. All this so you can improve your life and improve the lives of the people around you. If that sounds like someone you want to work with, give me a call at 443-977-4500. That's 443-977-4500. Looking for a new website for your business? Need some help getting people on your pages? Adventure Web Interactive is your all-in-one website source. Our websites have won multiple awards and recognitions for innovation and design. Choose from services like website design, mobile app development, database integration, SEO, social media marketing, and content writing. Call Adventure Web today for a free consultation at 410-788-7000 or click on advp.com. Search engine optimization can be critical to the success of any business. Every enterprise wants to solve the mystery of SEO. Here are a few facts. Four times as many consumers would rather watch a video about a product than read text about it. 40% of consumers say that video increases their chances of making an online purchase. Search engines like Google and Bing recognize that consumers stay twice as long if your site has video content. Call LW Biz Flix at 443-465-8300 to see how video content can drive your SEO upward. Product videos, website introductions, video testimonials, educational videos, explainer videos, you name it. Call LW Biz Flix today at 443-465-8300 or check out their website, lwbizflix.com. That's L-W-B-I-Z-F-L-I-C-K-S.com and get your business on track to maximize your SEO. I read the Baltimore Business Journal, and so should you. The BBJ is the region's leading business-to-business news organization. If it relates to business, the BBJ has it. Learn who is growing, what your competition is doing, who the movers and shakers are, and how to reach them. Visit BaltimoreBusinessJournal.com for breaking news throughout the day. Sign up for daily newsletters. Follow your favorite reporters as they break news via online stories and Twitter. And read the paper each Friday for a deep dive into the stories that matter most. Don't miss the Life and Breath Foundation's Flip Flop Festivus Celebration, Friday, September 21st at the Four Seasons. At this resort casual evening, mingle with celebrities, enjoy great food and drinks, dance to the sounds of DJ Smokey, casino games, raffle prizes, sports and travel packages, and the live auction. Proceeds will help the Life and Breath Foundation serve the sarcoidosis community and fund research. Get your tickets today at lifeandbreath.org or 410-750-8808. Now back to AHA Business Radio, creating AHA moments for business, by business, and about business. Once again, here's your host, Alan Hirsch. Welcome back to tonight's show. My guest in the studio with me tonight is uh, Chris Coca. He's president of Strategic Sales Alliances, uh, Solutions, excuse me. I told you I'd get one of the names wrong tonight. Uh, uh, if you have any comments or questions out there in the listening audience, give us a call, 410-481-1300. 
So we've been talking about really what do you do to learn something from the business owner. So once you've understood some of that, where do you start? Do you start at the top in working with the sales force, with the sales leadership, or do you work at the bottom in dealing with the sales people, or is it in the middle? Is it really not necessarily with the sales? Where do, where do you start that, of, that process that you go through? It's a great question. My, my focus is within sales, and I'm going to say the answer depends. And what it depends on is who is the sales leader? What I find in, with a lot of people that I work with, a lot of companies that I work with, the sales leader is actually the CEO or the owner, and they're wearing the sales hat along with all the other hats that they wear, and they're really stretched thin. And then they've got salespeople that they're trying to manage. So in that case, I'll want to understand what the business owner or CEO is doing to lead the sales team. But my focus is going to be more on the day-to-day operations of the sales team, how they function, how they interact with uh, customers, what do they do for their sales calls, and most importantly, what's their process and do they even have a process? Because you'd be surprised. Uh, In a lot of companies, there is no true sales process that's documented from the beginning of a lead all the way to closing the deal and all the steps in between. Many companies don't have that even on paper. Well, most of them don't have those processes on anything, any of the processes on paper. That's true. That's true. (laughs) Uh, Probably the most that do are franchises where they have to have it in paper in order to make sure Sure. that their franchisees can are successful. Sure. But being that as it may, so how do you? I mean, again, how do you start all of this? What are the things you have to figure out, and how do you go about making sure the sales, uh, the sales force, the sales team? is properly on board, properly trained? Well, I I think the first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that the sales team, if they don't have that process that we talked about, you've got to work with the owner quickly to get that process documented so that everybody's on the same page on how you're going to sell, what steps you need to take to close a deal, and then what do you do once the deal is closed. So that's really the beginning. Without that, you really don't have a foundation. Those are three... Very quick. In a little bit more depth, what's what's in working with businesses, what's a sales process look like? So the, the very beginning of a sales process is the lead. And in many cases, the lead will come in indirectly through the website or through a referral or uh, just through word of mouth. So it starts with you've got a lead. And you need to follow up with that. Well, it can also well. come through a cold call, but that's... And, and that's the other part. <laughs> so in many cases, the lead actually comes through a cold call, an email, um, you know, an introduction um, through somebody that maybe knows the, the targeted uh, customer. So you follow that lead and you go make that call and, and you start the, the process of selling. Well, but the pro- the first part of the process, once you, to me, once you have the process or the lead, is to record it. Absolutely. And, and that's a whole different part of the process. And, and that, that goes back to the pipeline. So, again, most companies don't have a great pipeline process to even track those leads. Who are they? Where did they come in and how did they come in? What are they worth? And what step are you at in the process? So, in addition to doing that sales process, you got to build a pipeline. And that pipeline could be already in place and you just need to kind of fix it and update it. Or they could have no pipeline. And really the best tool to build that pipeline is a customer relationship management tool or a CRM. So, what is, you know, and I know there are a number of CRMs and I don't want to use brand names. Uh, sure. But what are the basics, basic aspects of what a good CRM is for the basic small, mid-sized business? What are the things they should be looking for? In a good CRM. So a good CRM is activity based. So it tracks what your people are doing, how they're reaching out to customers, what are their activities to go get those new customers or to maintain the business that they have. So how many calls a week are they making? How many emails a week are they sending out? How many calls are they actually having with a prospective customer? And then what's happening during those calls to either close the deal Or sometimes you lose the deal, and that needs to be tracked in in the CRM as well. You need to understand if you're breaking down, where are you breaking down? Is it by salesperson? 
Is it by product? You know, you've got to delve deep into it. And a good CRM is going to show you all the activity and where you're successful and where you're not successful. And one clue I would suggest, uh, and I talk about, again, something I talk about on the show, is you need a CRM that fits your, uh, that fits your business. You don't build a, get a CRM and then have your business fit it. And many small businesses buy the big CRM. We won't name any names. And then they have trouble adapting to it because it's not really a good fit for their business. So what I try to do is find a CRM that's going to be the right fit for them. That's going to be easy to use. So that's another key. It's got to be easy to use. And it's got to create the right type of, of dashboard for the owner so that the owner can, can see where the business is at. Can you... Th- I know what a dashboard. Can you define what a dashboard is? A dashboard would be charts and graphs that would show a business owner what that pipeline looks like. So they may have a hundred thousand dollars of business that's in the initial lead stage. They may have five hundred thousand dollars of business that is in the call stage, and they may have a million dollars of business that's in the ready to close stage, so that that owner can see where the business is going. And if they're going to forecast sales, what would they forecast? What's the probability of those deals closing? Yeah. For, for me, what I work with, so Mike, the, the kind of dashboards that, just so people understand, what uh, is the, in, in, particularly in the construction business, but they're, what kind of estimates out there? What kind of quotes? And you quantify them. What's the dollar of it? If your estimates are lower this year than they were last year, you're not going to have higher sales. Right, right. <laughs> That's where it's. How many estimates have you sent out? And and and, and where are they? And what's the probability of closing? closing right. So you could have a, a deal that you think is a 50-50 shot, and you could have a deal that you really think is going to close, and you give it a 90% shot. And then that is going to take in the CRM and build a forecast for you based on the probabilities. And then it comes down to how accurate are you? Some and, salespeople are really accurate, and some salespeople sandbag, and some salespeople are overly aggressive. And the sec- to me, the second part is once you get the order, what's the backlog? Absolutely. So, what are you, what what orders? What are your orders on hand? Right, because if if you if it's a good or a product, you've got to make sure that you've got the capacity to fill all those orders. So it, it really ties back to operations and finance. And if the sales function's not right, and the data's not right, and the pipeline's not right, it it screws everything else up. It creates a lot of issues. I mean, I'll, I'll give an example without. Uh, uh, technically, part of it's confidential because it's one of my clients. Started with him, his sales were very flat. Once I got him using these charts, he realized his estimates were flat. Right. His backlog was flat, and his sales were flat. So once he began, and you can see on the date when he started getting uh, the the sales and the estimates started to increase by delegating to to employees to do to do the estimates rather than him. Because he could never get to them all. No way. And so f- in, in the last two and a half years, his business has almost tripled because he now saw where it was taking him. He knew how many estimates he had. Once he had the backlog, he knew how much business he was going to have in the next six to eight months. Right. And he knew whether he was going to achieve his goal or not, because right. if he knew that he was going to have a million dollars of business in the next six months, does that put him on track for his goal? And if it doesn't, that's where you go back to the sales team and say, I need a bigger pipeline. Uh, absolutely. I've, I've got to have more quotes. I've got to have more deals in the pipeline. A million dollars isn't going to be enough. I, I need two million or we're not going to hit our goal. Right. And, and that's and you look at those things and you you manage from those those pipelines, from those. Uh, charts, and you don't have to, uh, a good leader, CEO, doesn't necessarily have to be in the weeds. Right. And, and if you don't have that, it's just like a, a pilot that's flying blind. You don't know. You may you may run into a mountain. You may crash and burn. You've got to have that visibility so you know where you're going. Right. And and those are, for those out there, they're in the business world, they're called dashboards. They're a series of charts that an owner can look at in a matter of minutes and see where the business has been and where it's going. Absolutely. It's it's essential. It really is. But you'd be surprised. Most businesses do not have that CRM or that dashboard to provide that visibility like the business that you talked about. And they're not growing. Well, they, for example, they do not have a CRM. They have a it's but that's a but 
they track every one of the estimates. And that's that's the key. Right. They track every estimate. They can convert it to backlog when it becomes an order. And they know where they're going. Yeah. And they know where they've been, where they're going. It's been very successful. Uh, I do have to go to the next commercial break. And when I come back, I'm going to continue this conversation with uh, Chris Coca, President of Strategic Sales Solutions, LLC. I'm Alan Hirsch, and this is AHA Business Radio on CBS Sports Radio, 1300 AM. Minor delays northbound in the Fort McHenry Tunnel with major ones in that same direction in the Harbor Tunnel. On the inner loop, traffic is slow from Catonsville to Woodlawn. The outer loop, that's from Catonsville down to Lincoln Heights. Packed on the inner loop above Baltimore from the Harrisburg Expressway to Providence Road. Traffic is stop and go heading north on the Harrisburg Expressway through Hunt Valley, jammed from there to Belfast. Traffic is also tight northbound on 795. That's from just above McDonough Road to about Franklin Boulevard. With your traffic, I'm Nathan Scott on CBS Sports Radio 1300. I read the Baltimore Business Journal, and so should you. The BBJ is the region's leading business-to-business news organization. If it relates to business, the BBJ has it. Learn who is growing, what your competition is doing, who the movers and shakers are, and how to reach them. Visit BaltimoreBusinessJournal.com for breaking news throughout the day. Sign up for daily newsletters. Follow your favorite reporters as they break news via online stories and Twitter. And read the paper each Friday for a deep dive into the stories that matter most. Is your website up to the new Google standards? If it has been a while since your website has been updated, you could be missing out on valuable traffic because potential clients can't find you. At Adventure Web Interactive, our web designers can update your site by optimizing it for search engines and maximizing user experience. Contact Adventure Web today at 410 788 7007 for a free website analysis or visit us on the web at advp.com. The Baltimore City Chamber of Commerce is your voice in the Baltimore business community. Our mission is to help our members create lasting partnerships throughout the city and the region by making resources, information, and networking opportunities available to our members. For more information on how to get involved in Baltimore City Chamber of Commerce or to register for one of our upcoming events, visit us at BaltimoreCityChamber.org. That's BaltimoreCityChamber.org. Did you know that in 2015, there was over a billion dollars in theft? Construction sites are being targeted for their copper and equipment. Personal injury claims for retailers are up 74%. Your employees spend two-thirds of their day shopping online and using social media. SOS Tech Group offers comprehensive surveillance solutions to battle this growing epidemic. Call 410-559-7020 or visit sostechgroup.com for more info. Great athletes have coaches. So should CEOs and business owners. Hi, this is Alan Hirsch of Alan Hirsch Advisors. Owning a business takes drive, desire, and a certain amount of luck. Well, I can't help you with the luck. I can help you make better decisions, giving you a competitive edge. If you own a business, I invite you to contact us. Our goal is to help you align your company vision and your personal lives so you'll make and execute better decisions. At Allen Hirsch Advisors, we create those aha moments. Log on to allenhirschadvisors.com for more information. I-95 Business Magazine delivers direct access to business executives, decision makers, and professionals in Baltimore. I read every issue, so should you. It presents valuable and relevant stories, provides insights and ideas, and profiles successful and remarkable CEOs. It connects professionals with businesses. I-95 Magazine tells stories. Let it tell yours. Find it at i95business.com. Now back to AHA Business Radio, creating AHA moments for business, by business, and about business. Once again, here's your host, Alan Hirsch. Uh, welcome back to the show. I'm in the studio this evening with uh, Chris Coca. He's the president of Strategic Sales Solutions, LLC. If you have any questions or comments, please give us a call, 410-481-1300. When we left the last uh, segment, we were talking about some of the uh, CRMs and some of the dashboards that are needed. We mentioned briefly the uh, sales process, but one of the things we didn't talk about, which you brought up at the in the break, was that uh, to me, I think of a sales funnel. You start big with all the leads, right. and you have to funnel it down to those that actually become customers. 
Can you ex- explain that a little bit and 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 what that should look like and what it needs to do? Then we want to talk about uh, the salespeople. Sure. So it, it's all about whether the lead is qualified or not. And what I mean by qualified is, are they the right customer for your business? Do they have the ability to do the deal with you and, and be able to pay you? And do they have a true need for your product or service? And it's really up to the salesperson to determine whether they're a qualified lead or whether they're just a lead that's mildly interested that really is not going to result into to the top of that funnel. And good salespeople really understand which leads are qualified. And salespeople that don't understand that really struggle because they end up chasing way too much business that doesn't get closed. Right. It's, it's, they, they ch- they're chasing the wrong they're chasing their tail because the tail is not going to wag them. Yes, and <laughs> and I, I think that there's uh, an opportunity for us to talk more about leadership there as well because the sales leader really has to guide that sales team. And if they've got a couple of salespeople that really are not getting that part of the funnel right, then it's not about letting the salesperson go or reprimanding the salesperson. It's really about coaching them and trying to get them to understand where they're going wrong and how they can get a lot more refined in the information that they're they're qualifying leads on. So let's talk a little bit about your process in working with salespeople. What kinds of salespeople should you be look, looking for? What are the traits? What are the uh, issues when you're trying to help a client build a sales force? What do you look for? Well, the, the first thing I look for is and understand is that salespeople are the face of your company, if you think about it. They're really the ones that are going to interact with your key decision makers, with your customers, and they've got to be the right people. And you have to have the right people in the right positions. You you have to have the, you could have people that are talented in different areas and they may belong in a certain seat in within your company. But if they're not the right people for that sales position, then you've got to, you've got to move them and, and find the right fit for, for that because they are the face of, of your company. And if they're not comfortable being that face and you're not comfortable sending them out there as that face, then, you know, that, that shows that you've got to make that change. It, it reminds me very quickly of a, uh, insurance company in Hunt Valley, the first time I ever saw this, walked in and on the rece- receptionist desk was not, was her name, not the title receptionist, but director of first impressions. Because everybody that you see in a business is creating an, an impression on that business, on that customer. And I said earlier in the show, if the employees don't love the business, why should the customers? Right. Right. And, and I think if you look at those salespeople and you think about what makes them successful, what are some common denominators that make, no matter what they're so selling. So what are they? <laughs> so I, I would say there, there's, there's a couple of different areas, but I think the, the most important thing is that good salespeople are resilient. And they can bounce back from failure because if you've been in sales as long as I have or as long as you have, you know that there's going to be some rough times and some failure, right? Yeah, I, I started that way in lacrosse as a goalie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every time, every time you gave up a goal, you had to forget it and move forward. Yeah, and you you have to have that that mentality, that resilience to be able to move forward. Um, I'd say that you know you have to have the right values that match the company, but for most, it would be high integrity. It would be that you are transparent and honest, um, which, you know, you can take that for granted that all salespeople are going to be that way. But you really need to have the right people with the right integrity and the right foundation to represent you. Um, And then I think that for really good salespeople, um, they really need to be self-motivated and goal oriented. And a lot of people are waiting to be told what to do or they doubt what they can do. You have to have salespeople that get up every day, just like you talked about, why do I get out of bed? They've got to get up every day being passionate about what they do, being self-motivated, and they go out there and, and they hunt that business on a regular basis. Uh, just want to remind everybody, if you have any uh, questions or comments for Chris or myself, give us a call, 410-481-1300. So how do you find out? Whether the sale, the people you already have are that way. My father used to tell me uh, that when uh, that 
and, and you think about this, one third of the salesmen are great, you want everybody to like it. One third are average and you're scared to get rid of them, you're gonna get somebody worse. And then you have one third that really aren't performing. And no matter what the spectrum is, you have those. So how do you recognize the A players versus the B players and the C players? I think it goes beyond just the numbers. I think it goes um, all the way to what feedback do you get from your customers? How are they doing in terms of whether they're really making a difference in qualifying the business? Um, how much financial acumen and and detail do they have? You know, the really the A players really know their business inside and out. They know what's in their pipeline. They know what customers are trying to close, and they know where they're going to end up with their business. The C player is floundering. They don't know where they're going. They're putting everything in the pipeline. They're not detailed. They have no idea whether they're on track versus their goals or not. They're surprised when they get a check and they don't even understand how they were even compensated, you know, based on the goals that they have. They're, they're just sort of flying by the seat of their pants. But the A players, they know all of that better than you know it. So how do you get your C players to become B and then A players? Um, I think it's it starts with a great uh, coach and a great sales leader and somebody that can inspire people to get better. Um, that's what I'm passionate about. Um, I love working with sales teams. I love coaching and, and training and developing sales teams. And so you've got to you've got to put that passion and energy into those C players to help them get better. And you've got to show them that you understand what their weaknesses are. And you've got to show them the way forward and how they can get there and be encouraging. You're right. It's, it's not a punitive thing. You have to encourage them to get better. And then they're either going to take that and they're going to get better and move to the B area or they're going to remain at the C area. And then my advice to a business owner is you, you really can't afford to have too many C's on, on your sales team because you're never going to achieve your goals. Or on any team, uh, any part of the team, that's, that's C, right. C players. That's right. Uh, you should be hiring people that are actually smarter than you if you can. Uh, that's how you learn. Uh, but it does remind me of uh, uh, something I learned once. If you have these A players, one of the things you might want to look at is what makes them successful. Sure. What are some of the systems they might be using right? Uh, and processes, getting back to this process, that yes. they're using to help them be successful and having not just the leader, but having them maybe working with right. a C player right. and helping to train them on the methods that are making them successful. Yeah. That might not work. But at least the A players, they have a system and they know it, it and they work it. It does work. Peer influence really does work. Peers would rather learn from each other in many cases than learn from a sales leader. And the terminology um, that you were kind of describing is called a subject matter expert. So on every sales team I've had, I've had an SME or a subject matter expert that was really good in a couple of areas. And guess what I did? I made sure that that SME taught everybody else how to do it the way they did it. Yeah, it's, it, it, it makes perfect sense to me, uh, but some, you know, because they're doing it right. But you have to recognize that first in order to harness that and to be able to use it. And many companies really don't even recognize that they have subject matter experts. Right. I also think in looking at it, you have to find the we strengths and weaknesses of your salespeople. Sure. I have a, uh, and without going into details, had a client at, that had uh, three himself and two other salespeople. And one didn't have the volume of business as neither him or the other one. And when we went through the process of understanding what was doing, that particular salesperson, strength was in one of the product lines. Sure. Which was the less expensive one. The other salesperson was an expert in the more expensive product line. Sure. So in one of the solutions that he... We, came up with that the owner worked out was creating instead of a tariff because and one of the things you have to look at sales is it territorial is it by customer right. or is it by product line right in this case he converted to a product line expert and we'll talk about the end uh, in the next segment when we get to it we're going to talk a little bit about compensation uh, and leadership but what he ended up doing figuring out a way that they'd both be happy and splitting the compensation when if uh, customer A wanted product B and salesperson B was a better sale. Bring them in. Absolutely. And and that changed the sales process for that company. And it made the company a lot more money. 
Absolutely it did. Which is the key. And I do have to go to our next break. And when I come back, I'm going to continue this conversation with Chris Coca, President of Strategic Sales Solutions, LLC. And when I do return, immediately we'll follow the discussion with him. I will have the AHA Trivia Contest. The winner will receive the gift certificate uh, to Touche Touche uh, Cafe and Bakery in Elk Ridge, Maryland. And I've been there several times, and it's wonderful. I'm Alan Hirsch of Alan Hirsch Advisors, and this is AHA Business Radio on CBS Sports Radio, 1300 AM. In the digital world, first impressions are everything. If your site is slow or outdated, you could be missing out on valuable business. The team at Adventure Web Interactive is ready to help you bring your website up to date so that you can reach new audiences and convert more leads. Contact Adventure Web today at 410-788-7007 for a free website analysis or visit them on the web at ADVP. Com. I'm Alan Hirsch, and I believe in making a difference in the lives of others. I help you understand your vision, both professional and personal, discover why you're in business, work with your visions to align them with your why, give you feedback on what is important, and hold you accountable for your decisions. All this so you can improve your life and improve the lives of the people around you. If that sounds like someone you want to work with, give me a call at 443-977-4500. That's 443-977. 977-4500. At Offit Kerman, we do things differently. Clients choose us because we understand business and we're innovative problem solvers. We are attorneys who help business owners excel in both their professional and personal lives and in the most productive and cost-effective manner. That's what makes us the perfect legal partner for maximizing and protecting your business value and individual wealth. We are a full-service law firm. We are off at Kerman. How can we help you? I read the Baltimore Business Journal, and so should you. The BBJ is the region's leading business-to-business news organization. If it relates to business, the BBJ has it. Learn who is growing, what your competition is doing, who the movers and shakers are, and how to reach them. Visit BaltimoreBusinessJournal.com for breaking news throughout the day. Sign up for daily newsletters. Follow your favorite reporters as they break news via online stories and Twitter. And read the paper each Friday for a deep dive into the story that matter most. The Maryland Construction Network is an innovative construction association representing the entire construction community. With premier networking events, relevant educational programs, and unique and creative ways to market and promote your business. The question is, why not the Maryland Construction Network? It's affordable and it's effective. As a business coach, I recommend that you check it out for yourself. Visit mdconstructionnet.net to learn more. That's mdconstructionnet.net. Why are your potential customers buying from your competitors? And what are you doing about it? Whether you need to increase foot traffic or web traffic, you need a solid plan to reach new customers. Ah, new customers. That's what it's all about, right? At CK Westbury, we can develop and execute a plan designed to reach new customers and build loyalty with your current ones. We are CK Westbury Media and Marketing, 410-832-2426. That's 410-832-2426. Now back to AHA Business Radio, creating AHA moments for business, by business, and about business. And now it's time for tonight's AHA Trivia Question, where you can win great prizes from the AHA Business Radio Show. Call 410-481-1300 if you know the answer. And now with tonight's AHA Trivia Question, here's your host, Alan Hirsch. Oh, welcome back. Uh, tonight's trivia question is, that since this is the day after Labor Day, in what city was the first U.S. Labor Day celebration held which was Tuesday, September 5th, 1882. In what city was that first Labor Day celebration held? If you think you know the answer, give us a call, 410-481-1300, and the caller with the correct answer will receive the gift certificate to Touche Touche Bakery Cafe in Elk Ridge, Maryland. While we wait for the callers, I want to continue my conversation with uh, Chris Coca, uh, who's president of Strategic Sales Solutions. When we left, we, were, we tied in a little bit um, the idea of compensation for salespeople. 
So I know you want to talk about, because that's something that I think is critical for successful sales forces. It is. If, if the sales compensation is wrong, then it really has a negative impact on the business. And, and what I mean by that is you have to have the right incentives for your salespeople and you have to have the right balance. So the balance comes from the fixed uh, salary type of compensation that you're offering versus the variable, which would be a commission or bonus or something that is based solely on sales. And if you don't have the right mix between fixed and variable, you're not going to have the right incentives for the salesperson, or you may have it that the salesperson uh, is not properly aligned with the company goals. So the, the last piece of the pie is to make sure that all of your sales incentives and all of your goals tie back to the corporate goals and, and make sure that everybody's on the same page and that they know what those goals are. Uh, so how, how do you figure some of this out? Well, you know, I, I'll give you one example. I think examples are one, stories and examples are wonderful. Sure. So I recently worked with a client and um, they had 15 people that did sales and they were all inside salespeople. They still sold, they still followed up on leads, they still closed deals, but they were inside salespeople. So you might treat that compensation a little bit different than outside salespeople who are dealing directly with the customer and going out and qualifying leads and not having a phone call or an email come in. But at the same time, they're still salespeople. So you need to make sure the compensation's right. And this particular client, they paid them 95% fixed compensation or a salary and their variable compensation was only 5% of their total. So guess what happens? If they're really not incented to grow and to sell, and they're gonna make 95% of their compensation no matter what they do, then they're really not gonna be pushing very hard for sales. So the first thing I said is we've got to fix this equation to really get people to be able to be incented properly and to make more money. My goal uh, with all of my clients is you want to grow and you want your salespeople to make more money so that they wanna to continue to work for you. Uh, I remember a, a great story uh, about a merger of a company. Uh, two $30 million companies merged, same business, uh, the acquire basically the acquiring company had a salesperson they were paying X2 uh, that only did two or three million dollars in sales to their major accounts. The acquired company had a sales salesperson that was paid a lot of money, but uh, twenty percent of the company's sales was his. Wow! Because it was the big box retailers, the Costco's, sure. the uh, Walmart, Walmart's, the. Kmart's and those kinds of customers. Sure. And when they merged, they fired, because he was making so much money, they fired the one salesperson uh, because they wanted to save the money with the other one. And within two years, their total sales were $30 million. Yeah, it, it, it's really going to hurt you. You get rid of that A player, and it, it's really going to hurt you. And and sales managers need to be comfortable that their salespeople may make more money than they make. Same thing for a CEO. Same thing. CEO's value is in the assets. If you have a salesperson making more than you, and you're making, I don't know, 25% net profit, when a salesperson, he's making more than you, your return on that salesman is somewhere close to five to seven times your profit. And it's going to put you in a much better position if you ever want to sell the company. I, I, I hate to say it. Every one of us will exit our business, your business one day or one way or the other. Yes. Yes. Uh, and it's better to plan for it today when you start it rather than think about it when you're ready. Right. And, and, and this is one of the things to, to you. If a salesman makes more money than you, it's because they're performing. And that's part of what I evaluate with a CEO as part of that beginning process is, is there that comfort level for salespeople to be the highest compensated people in the company? And if there isn't, then that's a discussion that has to be had up front. Well, in the meantime, I just want to repeat the uh, trivia question. What U.S. city was the first Labor Day celebration on Tuesday, September 5th, 1882? Please give us a call, 410-481-1300, if you know the answer. Uh Lastly, with the na last five minutes or so, uh, we've touched on it a couple times, and that's sales leadership. Uh, what is a good sales leader, sales manager, director of sales? What are the qualities they should have, and what do you look for, what a business owner out there should look for in, in having one? So I'll start with 
what a great sales leader is not. In a lot of cases, you'll have a great salesperson that will get promoted because they're the best salesperson to the sales leader. And just because you you know you have the right uh, salesperson and the, and they're great with customers. That doesn't mean that they're a great sales sales leader. What you have to have is somebody that is good with customers, but is a great people leader. And not everybody's qualified to be a great people leader. Not everybody's comfortable holding others accountable. So with a great sales leader, you have to have somebody that is willing to inspire, willing to coach and and teach and help the salespeople get better, but also very willing to hold the team accountable to the results that the company needs needs to have. And each individual accountable for the goals that they set. And one of the things I, when I talk to clients, is the goals that are set should be mutually agreed upon. Up front. Up front. Between the, if, it, if it's the sales manager and the salesman that are setting the, the goals, they should be set mutually so that they're in such a way that they are achievable so yes. that they can be acknowledged, appreciated. And I can tell the, the, I don't think I've ever done this on the air about my son in law worked for a uh, subsidiary of UPS. And they, they spun it off, and he was one of their number one salespeople, and spun it off to a investment banking firm out in who all they wanted was return. So they changed the goals and everything for the salespeople, uh, without telling them. Right. Made them uh, made them unachievable, so they couldn't earn their bonuses, uh, and he was the first one to leave. Right. Right. And and I've got the opposite story. When I took over this sales team of over 100 people and there were 10 sales leaders, none of them were making their bonus. Everybody was disgruntled, but it was a really talented team. So I went to work to make sure that those goals were smart. And we've talked about that specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Well, I also like to, and uh, for me, R can be also be who's responsible and also what are the resources they need. Absolutely. So a good sales leader does provide the right resources and removes obstacles. So if operations is in the way for success or finance is in the way for success, then that great salesperson has to work within the organization (laughs) to get the right resources and remove obstacles so that the sales team can go out and do what they do best. And T, for those who didn't, is time. It's got to be time frame. Time bound. Because how do you hold someone accountable if you say, you got to double your sales? Well, is that... Six months, a year, 10 years? And how does that impact compensation? What happens if I do double my sales? What's the compensation? Right. And that all goes back to performance management. So the last piece is a good sales leader has to be really great at performance management. And it's not just an annual review of the salesperson. It is a weekly or monthly meeting that the sales leader is going to have with the salesperson to review results. And to review those KPIs that you talked about, are they on track with their leading indicators, with the activities that they're doing to be successful? And where they're off track, the sales leader, their job is to get them back on track. And KPIs defined for the audience? Is uh, key uh, indicators. Key production indicators. In, in, a, in a production environment, Environ- absolutely. Or but, be in any kind of environment. It's what you're producing. It's the information you have. Yes. And, 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 and that goes back to the... Uh, 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 the, <laughs> uh, uh, the, uh, uh, graphs and everything that the, uh, the dashboard, the dashboard. Thank you. I, yes. Yes. Yeah, at my age, I still I lose words. So, so those I'll, KPIs go back to the dashboard. They're in your pipeline okay. and, and your sales leader is on top of all of that with every salesperson that they have. And they're managing that to make sure that the team stays on track. And if the team gets off track, they're addressing that with each individual. And they're making sure that the feedback that they give is individual in nature. They're not just giving feedback to the whole team. They're giving individual feedback back to every team member uh well first of all since no one called with the uh trivia question tonight the answer to the trivia question is new york city uh and again the first labor day celebration was tuesday september 5th 1882 uh chris i want to thank you for being here my pleasure we there were some things i wanted to talk about which we didn't get to so hopefully we'll get you back in the future how can the listeners reach you if they want to talk to you further about uh Uh, sales consulting. So the best way to reach me is to send me an email 
And it's ccoca, C-C-O-C-C-A, at salesacceleration.com. Or they can call my cell phone. And my cell phone is 918-409-9559. Thank you very much. I also want to thank my producers tonight, uh, Jake McDonald, who's been training to be my producer, and Billy Goheen, who has been for the last few months. Thank you both for everything you do to make it happen. Please join me next Tuesday at 6 p.m. when I'll be talking business with four area uh, business owners, Christopher, Christopher, uh, Ms. Mandel at uh, Epic Technology Advisors, Sean Hall, founder of the Life and Breath Foundation, Beverly Williams of Sue Ann's Office Supply, Andre Cooper, CEO of the Children's Home. I'm Alan Hirsch of Alan Hirsch Advisors, your host. To reach me, call 443-977-4500 or visit my website, alanhirschadvisors.com. This has been AHA Business Radio on CBS Sports Radio, 1300 AM. Good. Talk to you next week.